All right. So Dante. So Dante all of the time. We're doing like an old school. Yeah, thank you for shutting up. We're, we're doing old school streaming. And I don't know how I'm going to split this. I kind of want to do it 30 minutes at a time, but that's going to be hard to keep track of. So, eh, I'll split it when I split it. Whatever, man. So, okay. We are doing the Miskatonic. There's going to be silly voices. It's going to be great. I am planning on embarrassing myself, and no, alcohol isn't. 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minute chunks. No, no, no. Um, we're going to split it for YouTube into 30 minute chunks. Memes. I can do silly voices. Yeah, but you won't be able to catch up on with me at the same time. Also, I want to try out silly voices. I'm I'm crap at silly voices. Uh, anyway, let's get started. I hope it loads right. Oh, good. Oh, good. It's really a slow loader. Noted. I don't have any loading screens either. I, just, I got a blank screen, and that's it. I, I literally see what you see. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! No, let's not do full screen. Let's do cute little small vision thing. Now we see a lolly. Yeah, I'm told that there are lollies in here. Which, you know, that wins points with me. <laughs> oh no, it's the Lelise. Uh, new game, load game, exit. There's no... Wow! Jesus Christ! Alright, hey, Commander Rogue. Oh, God. I forgot I put that there. Goddamn, welcome. Welcome to the... To the world pyre, where we like to watch the world burn. Um, wow, what the hell was I doing? Uh, I guess let's just go with new new game. Um, as this is like, how many visual novels has I done? I think none. None many. Let's get started. I already like the music and the art style. Actually, the art style is what sold me on this shit. This is Marie Peanut Butter. Okay. Bonjour, we, we childrens. My name is Marie Peanut Butter, head of occult science at the Miskatonic University. Oz is the most prestigious institution of dark magic, the occult, and all strange ghoulies that live in your peripheral vision. I, uh, I uh, got, a, got a handy head there. Faux French sucks. All of this is going to suck. Prepare for suck. I am here today to tell... Now you made me... You're making me self-conscious. I am here today to tell you a story. A story about a little girl that ruined everything. But ruining everything gives you the opportunity to make everything better. Wee oui, wee. Oui. That I'm going to take a wicked wee. Oui. Alright, wicked yes. What's that, you ask? Why have I a giant hand sticking out of my head? Well, that's because I'm French. <laughs> it is a thing we have. So, funny business, we. Oui? Oh, uh, so no funny business. What are you are you asking for a hand job or to give head? I don't even know how I should go about this. How old are you? How how many subscribers will I lose by making that joke? <laughs> um, you'll learn about the strange things people are afflicted with throughout this story. After this, you'll think my hand head is cute and adorable, as you should. But first, let me describe the state of the world prior to the witch girl that ruined everything. Do not fret. You probably know this already, we? Oui? So, you are aware of the giant aliens that we call gods and the cultists that we worship that worship them, no? Then let me tell you. You worship some worship Cthulhu, the great man octopus dragon thing. His cult teaches eternal patience, waiting for Cthulhu to come back to them so that he can destroy the world. Rude! Some worship Yog sothoth my, that's my patron demon, by the way. <laughs> the outer dimensional god of knowledge. 
These smarty brains try to build portals to let him come here. But that would destroy the world too. Not so smarty. Uh, actually, uh, okay, uh, as a worshipper of Yogg-Sothoth, no, there's no portal. There doesn't need to be a portal. We're already in Yogg-Sothoth. Yogg-Sothoth is the key. Yogg-Sothoth is the gate and the key and everything surrounding the gate and key. He is the portal and the thing the portal leads to. Uh, we've covered this like a thousand times. Anyway, most humans, like our witch girl, worship Shug Niggurath. Oh, that's, oh, that's sexy. Known as the All Mother, even cultists for outer gods will pray to Shub Nigara at the end of their spells and rituals. The uh, the Black Goat of the Woods with a thousand young, yeah. This is because Shub Niggurath is the goddess of humanity. I feel so uncomfortable saying her name. Her cult preaches love and compassion amongst everyone. We so very lovely. We. Pardon me, I just dig his freckles, her freckles, shit, I'm doing this again. But like our witch girls, some can be blinded by their desire for harmony. Yeah, fuck Discord, we should beat Discord up. There are some that would take advantage of the naive notion that all humans are loving and good. Not so lovely. <laughs> okay, so, you know of gods now, we? Eh? So let's talk a small bit about the humans of this world. Some of the countries have been more affected than others by the strange happenings of the universe. For example, in Canada, Canada, yetis, noted, thousands of them. <laughs> but the Canadians are well prepared. Yeti invasions are considered a national pastime. <laughs> Bring the family, we will shoot some yetis. Ah, this is the best. I made a good choice here. This is what us French call an English person. <laughs> Note the sharp teeth, purple blush, big ugly face. A couple of decades ago, it was discovered that a huge patronage of the English nobility were actually cannibals, breeding humans underground like livestock. Everyone in England... <laughs> everyone in England and went crazy. <laughs> when it was found out, so now they're all cannibals too. Everybody's cannibals. Is this racist? Is it month? Can you be racist against white people? The answer is yes, because like which race of white people? And then that tells like, really ask the Irish. They'll tell you if you can be racist to white people. Uh, really? Is this, is it? Okay. I didn't know this was based on reality. Like, I know it's. I thought it was historical fiction, but apparently this is just history. Apparently the Scottish found it hilarious. <laughs> this one is also my boyfriend. So, no touching his ugly face, we? Uh, sure. I mean, whatever you're into. I like cannabis. I mean, cannabis, would you say cannabis? They're Englishmen or cannabis, right? What? The f okay, these little fellas are called Australians. <laughs> when the Shagats left Antarctica, they came across the big island filled with lovely, delicious humans. But these humans didn't want to be devoured, and even when ha half dissolved in Shagats' bellies, the human would punch and kick and smash bottles inside of them, making the Shagats very uncomfortable. <laughs> So she wants to be eaten. No, she's French. Hello, they have hands for heads. We, yeah, just, you know, it makes really, it makes good sense that the Shuggas would encounter a lot of trouble trying to defeat Australia. It's Australia, where everything is strange and poisonous. So they'd be like, huh, oh, <laughs> put another Shuggas on the Barbie. So instead of trying to eat them, the Shuggas formed this cute little symbiotic relationship with the Australians, granting them immortality in exchange for less punching. <laughs> so these little Shanes and she Shaylas, is it she Shanes and Sheilas? Can happily booze and barbecue for all of eternity. Okay. This is called an American. Note the silly haircut and gigantic bum. Specifically, this, the... Uh, 
Specifically, this is the American that our story revolves around, the little witch girl that ruined everything. Yeah, she's just pretty cute. Okay, I'm totally into this. This is the best. <laughs> How can you tell she's a witch? Why, there are many clues. Example, the pasty skin. A symptom of spending her days asleep and her nights dancing naked in the rain with her coven to conjure strange hexes. Trap? You think this is a trap? <laughs> also, the little black choker thing is the closest thing to a uniform they get. Oh, I didn't even notice the black culture. That's, yeah, that's adorbs. I'm going to be making so much fan art about this thing. This, holy hell. <laughs> also, she doesn't wash. Hey! <laughs> Are you going to make me look like a dumbass in this story? Because it was only like 20% my fault. Our story begins with our smelly dumbass being briefed on the universe's on the university's secret pr protocols after being hired as a security guard for the occult science building. Even if she's not a boy, is a total trap. Okay, uh, voice for her. I think in, I'm. God damn, man! I kind of want to go uh, Jane Lane. So I think this probably kind of. I missed what her name was too. We'll get to it, though. But on her first assignment, she discovered that all is not as it seems at the prestigious school. Texan? Texan. You want me to go Texan. But this is going to happen if it's in the Miskatonic. This is in Boston. And I cannot do a Boston accent. Thanks. <laughs> Texan it is. Nutsack. <laughs> Charlotte Lestrange. We're going Texan. Now, Miss Lestrange, you understand that as a security agent, your off-site assignments are to be kept in the strictest confidence, even from other members of the faculty and especially the students. Uh-huh. You also understand that as a security agent, you'll be in very real danger, both from physical harm and mental corruption. You understand that your body is subject to mutation at any point during your employment at the residence in Arkham. Rad! And finally, you understand that as a University of Occult Science, you are obliged to assist us with research regarding your supposed magic eyes. And failure to comply will result in your immediate dismissal. Um, sure. Well then, Miss Lestrange. Welcome to the Miskatonic University. You got, you got something stuck in your teeth. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I do watch GT Live, and this means... Bleh! Awesome. <laughs> hey, it's Johnny Lagrasse. Which... Wait, wasn't that... Okay, Lagrasse is from Call of Cthulhu, right? <laughs> Lolly vibes? Uh, I am... Yeah, I'm totally going to jail with how much uh, I like the Lolly vibes, so... <clears throat> ah, you must be the new security guard, Charlotte, right? Yep, that's me. Great, I'm Johnny, head of the internal security. I'll be giving you a tour of the building. You'll be patrolling. Then I'll show you to your quarters. Ready to go? Sure. Wow, this is... This is... This is incredibly awesome. I'm... I'm fucking loving this. Well, you'll be working here, in the Occult Science Building. You're a witch, right? Have you dabbled in any occult sciences? You know, as a witch, who is part of the occult? I'm not trying to imply anything, I'm asking. Maybe you haven't dabbled at all in the occult, you witch. You freaking witch. Well, I'm pretty good at the occult stuff, though mostly I use it for errands and favors for folks. Plus a few hexes, curses, blights, 
just to keep up the witchy appearance. <laughs> What's with your face, dude? What, his eye? Shh, don't, don't mention his eye. What are you, crazy? Blood into jam, bones into sponge cake, cat into mush. Phallus into tiny screaming, vestial faces. Okay. <clears throat> Normal stuff. Well, we do things a little bit differently here. This way. <laughs> awesome. This is the Ethereum where our students can perform experiments in, on the Necronomicon. Why would you experiment on the Necronomicon? Wouldn't you experiment with the Necronomicon? <coughs> People and pies. And if you're drinking Grim, stop it. I'm, I'm not, no, I am not drinking alcohol. I have been dry for several months. This is just Burpacola. It's double bubble Burpacola. Mm. Oh. God, that's really burpy, though. This creature acts as a shield to the outside world, keeping any experiments sterile and quarantine any unexpected summonings. Am I, am I consistent in this guy's voice? Oh, well. Let's just keep it up like this. Hi. Hello. I'm sorry if I blew out your ear, earbuds. Rip headphone users. We didn't know it could do that. Did you try talking to him? You're going to provide some much needed common sense around here, Charlotte. This building also houses the Corporeum, a surgical theater where our students can perform vivisections and autopsies on otherworldly creatures. Like rabbits and worms. Space rabbits. Ah, speaking of which, this is Eddie, one of our monster hunters. Thanks to him, our corporeum professor, cor corporeum pr professors have been able to gather more information on the living horrors than any other time in the university's history. B best voice ever? What? This man's voice? This Johnny Legrasse. Ready? Oh, Scotch? Scotch? I can't do a Scotch accent very well. I can write Scotch good because all I have to do is write. Eddie's Scottish? Where's where's the Scotch? All right. Well, we'll deal with that in a second. Oh, this is Crazy Eddie. The trick is to figure out where its face is. And then... Commence repeating punching. Who's the note girl? Is that Scotch enough or is that Irish? I get them mixed up. They're both Gaelic. So it's hard for me to pin down which one's which. Ah! <laughs> this is Charlotte Lestrange, a witch from... Who? Chessencook. The Chessencook Coven. She'll be working security for this building. Lagrasse is, Louis is a Louisianian name. Is Louisianian? Well... Yeah, I guess that is kind of Louisianian. Uh, Norlin-y. Ha! Looking after us rascals, eh? Well, give me a clip round the back of the head if you see me slacking off, and I'll get back to work. Eh, big stuff? I have been known to whip some ass with my big muscles. There you go. Come round and chop shop. You want to see? You want to see what me and the lads wrangle up the other day? You witches like nightmares, right? Scottish works. You're okay with the Scotch? All right. Oh God, it's hard to keep up because they talk fast, and I cannot read as fast as they talk. Also, spiky teeth. I am always a fan of spiky teeth. I have two characters with spiky teeth. And the big muscles? Eh, I'm okay with big muscles, I guess. Not my thing. Not really my thing. Not a big muscle fan. But I'm okay with it. Well, <laughs> sure. Well, the fun ones, anyway. Like when your teeth all fall out and you smooth them off with sandpaper to make a lovely necklace. That's a big maggot bag. 
It's a big maggot. Or when you're running down the corridor in slow motion with a bunch of hands coming out of the carpets and grabbing your ankles, and you finally stop to ask them what they want, and it turns out that your shoelaces were untied, and they were just super concerned for your safety. Aww. Or when you're at school, and you stand up in class, but you forgot your pants, and you're embarrassed, but everyone com compliments your butt. Well, you're a bloody weird one, Charlotte. <laughs> so, you'll fit right in here. Don't let my sister catch wind of you. She won't leave you alone. You're telling stories like that. That has never happened to me. I have no butt. I just have a void um, where my butt should be. And, like, poop comes out of the, the black hole in the void whenever I sit down. Which is also hard, what with no butt. And, like, toilets tend to crack... Not under the weight, but under the gravitational pull. <laughs> it sometimes happens to you. Lucky. Ah, here's our curator of the Comporium, Miss Mary Peanut Butter. <laughs> Don't talk about her name. Do not mention her name. Just call her Mary. <laughs> I would compliment. You'd compliment my space, my my black hole butt, my void butt. She used to be a void shaman, oh no, void butts. She used to be a void shaman from Paris before coming to work with us. As fun, as satisfying as the void is, my true passion lies in discovering how things work out. We? Oh, work. We. We. God, switching back and forth between these uh, accents are going to be real. F why, did I, why did I decide to do this? At least when they're dead. Groovy. What's a void shaman? You know those... <clears throat> shit. You know those dark thoughts you sometimes have for seemingly no reason? The ones that tell you to jump at the edge of the... Jump off the edge of a cliff? Or rob a bank when cashing a paycheck? Or drop kick a grandma through the stainless steel glass church window at a funeral? Oh. Yeah, I get those all the time. Well, those are not your thoughts. A few hundred years ago, a French aristocrat... Eh, a French aristocrat sees... Fucking Christ. No, we're going to work on this. I'm not, I'm not going to let this, this go. go. Dropkicking grandmas. Always fun. Aristocracy. Our aristocracies. Aristocracies. Aristocracy. Ar aristocracies. Okay, emphasis on the ah. Oh. A few hundred years ago, the French aristocracy's way of life was so decadent and whim and whim filled, their unabridged sauciness only went and summoned a bloody hedonist, hedonism god. Damn thing lives under the Paris catacombs, communicates telepathically with people all over the world, urging them to give in to their darkest whims. The French get it the worst, of course. So, this year's shamans take take it upon themselves to do the dark deeds so the rest of France didn't have to. My, must be a right giggle. What if that's not a maggot? Just a maggot bag with something else in it. My last act as a shaman before coming here, I took my clothes off, covered myself in lemon cake, and greed food coloring, and terrorize the local village as a delicious swamp monster. That's adorable. I quite enjoyed that one. Like putting peanut butter and jelly in a sandwich in a cat's food tray? No, that's just laziness. Or stonerisms. Why does my thing keep changing? Shall we press on with our tour? Sure. Bye, you guys. So, um, not to be rude, but judging from the bandaged up arm and the sick eye scar and the terror lines in your hair, I'm getting the impression that security work here is, uh, you know, a little dangerous. Oh, not for you, at least. The occult science building is probably the safest on campus. Oh, that's just gonna ruin everything. Jenny Tenick. Well, we need a voice.
I'm thinking Southern. God, how am I going to switch back and forth between this? New Yorker? Because if something went wrong in this building, we'd all be too dead to notice. No, she, I can't do Brooklyn accent. I can't, I can't do Brooklyn accent. I'm a southerner. I'm I tend towards the so having having Charlotte's accent be southern is perfect for me. We'll just do straight just like cuz if something went wrong in this building we'd all be too dead to notice. There we go. That seems that sounds good, right? Mexican? <laughs> okay. Cuz if something went wrong in this building We'd all be too dead dead to notice. Mm, nah, I'm not. I'm just gonna go with straight. Don't listen to her. She's just a little jealous that the new girl gets the cushy gig while she's stuck in the math department. What happened in the math department? What doesn't happen in the math department? There's nothing so cold, so unforgiving, so dark as the mathematicians. The universe is not but an equation. They shriek behind their burnt hairs and sludge-tainted cardigans. One that can be solved. But how do you solve the equation of a do dozen screaming children being ingested by a black, swirling chasm of teeth and clawing hands opened at the rear end? the far end of the classroom by one of the damnable equations. Somebody's... Somebody's... Actually, uh, yep, I have a half a meter of those. Oh, sorry, man. I right, hang on. I gotta get this, because I don't want him to... Just, just a second. We'll edit this out in post. No, we won't. <laughs> there we go. All right. Where were we? Misca Miskatonic thingy. Oh, yeah. Damn you, young Henry. Carry that damn two. <laughs> so, let's carry on with the tour. Next up is the library. Awesome. <laughs> Each building hosts a small library dedicated to the researching and documenting the subjects of that building students are studying. I, I could have been... I've been doing a lot of editing on my own story, and that's, that's not... Well, could have been cut up a little bit. Here in the Occult Science Building, we are we keep an original copy of the Necronomicon, as well as translated copies for our foreign exchange students. Because this is a good idea to spread the black knowledge of the Necronomicon in all languages. <laughs> in print. <laughs> this is great. Let's create the internet and make the internet the Necronomicon. Does that mean we're going to get a Wikinomicon? That's a lot of knowledge. Ah, and here's our... Oh, sorry. Ah, and here's our librarian. Charlotte, meet Miss Emily. Sash... 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 Sach... Sach... Sacrin? Sacrin. Sacrin. Miss Emily Sacrin. It was never meant to stay in the university. It was meant to be in all hands. As El Hazrad would have it. Hulu Blue! Okay. Hi, I love your mask. I didn't know you guys had a Shagath here. And a tame one, too. Are they really tame? Are they ever tame? Oh, Mrs. Emily isn't a Shagath. She merely had a small accident with the Necronomicon a while ago. Ended up like this. 
But our occult scientists learned an awful lot about what happens with these tomes of black knowledge when they spill... When you spill soy no whip ice caramel mochilado two shot hazelnuts on them. I wonder if it's gonna be like that specific thing as part of a ritual. Soy no whip ice. What year is it? Huh. Sure looks like a shaga. Purpley, gooey, moderately adorable, with a hint of terrifying. Oh man, maybe the che Texan uh, accent was perfect. Well, that's just the Necronomicon for you. It's funny, spilling a non-fat frappuccino with extra whipped cream and chocolate sauce just turns you into a puddle of loose bones and blood. Still, hasn't stopped Emily from performing her duties, eh, Emily? Fuyoju! Fuyoju! Shall we press on? Okay, nice meeting you, Emily. Charlotte, this is Lizzie Dunwich. Dunwich? Dunwich. Dunwich. Dunwich? Dunwich. Dunwich. It's Dunwich. I'm pretty sure it's Dunwich. This is L Lizzie of Dunwich, our Yog Sothoth consultant. She's taught us quite a lot about the outer dimensional dimensions during her time here. Lizzie, Charlotte is the new security witch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dunwich. It's not Dunwich. I know it should be Dunwich. It could go either way because this is Boston. <laughs> Are you the sort of witch that does the naked in the rain? Or the sort of witch that does the lucky charms and the big hats? Um, the rain kind. You mean you and me are going to get along? Yeesh. Okay, Lizzie of Dunwich is now the best. Is This is best girl. Just mark it down. This is best girl. <laughs> so, like, how come I can't? What are you? I'm a Lizzie. What are you? No, I mean, like, why do you look like a shadow? Or, like, a part of my eyeballs have stopped working? It's because humans can't see all they're afraid of me and my sister's appearance. Everything else can see me. That's why doggies are all tuck their tails when I go near them. Lizzie is an example of a mental phenomenon found only in humans, known as cerebral voiding. It's a tricky, it's a trick by the brain to deserve, to preserve the sanity of its carrier. When a person comes across a sight too horrible to comprehend, like math, their brains refuse to render it. Instead of showing a black silhouette, in, instead showing... Hey, Cog Whistle! Welcome to the World Pyre, where we watch the world burn. Instead of showing a black silhouette in place of the site itself. I think this is a good, actually a good spot, spot to put a cut in for, for cerebral voiding. We're going to cerebral void for justice and for YouTube, but mostly for justice. So give me a second. I also need a second to stretch, so I'll be right back. 